welcome to episode nine of Just Branding. I'm super excited today because we are going to be talking about audio branding. And it's a topic that is pretty, uh, was not talked about very often, and especially in the branding world. And people may be aware of what um, an audio logo is, but maybe not the breadth of how deep audio branding goes. And today we have um, Gabriel Aguario from Drop Music Branding. And they're a super talented bunch. There's three of them down in Argentina. And I recently worked with them to create the intro for just, well, this podcast, actually. You heard it when you tuned in. And they didn't just create that, but they created a whole suite of sounds to, uh, I guess, create this show. And we're going to go through them today. You're going to, we're going to share that with um, Gabo. Gabo? Gabo? <laughs> I practiced this name so many times, I still mess it up. Gabo. Gabriel. <laughs> Um, we're going to go talk through some of the sounds he created for us. They're awesome. And we're going to talk about what audio branding is, some examples of it from other brands. Um, we're going to talk about when it's required, some how you can apply it, the benefits of it, uh, what makes branding good and what bad branding, audio branding, um, and how we can actually sell through audio branding to a client who may not be aware what it is. We're going to talk about the process and how we can stand out as designers. Um, or brands in the marketplace. And we may even touch on trademarking as well. So we've got a lot to cover. Super excited to talk about this with uh, Gabo and Matt as well, uh, who is here in the background calling from the UK. And um, I'm from Australia, so we are pretty much a, the furthest away possible that we can be, uh, but we're making this happen. And yeah, I'm super excited to get into this. So- um, A global yeah. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought? <laughs> exactly, exactly. All so, corners of the globe. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's start at the top. It's um, audio branding. What is it to you, Gabo? Hey guys, first of all, I want to thank you guys for having me on the show. I'm I'm really honored to be here. And well, audio branding, audio branding branches from branding, of course. So it it's it's like obvious obviously branching from branding but if you were a musician and you learned and you kind of came to across audio branding you have to learn a lot of branding so that's that's kind of different from us and if you're a brander and you come across with audio branding you kind of have to understand how music works um I would say that audio branding is the way the design of brands communication through sound that that's the definition I I I I think it's more useful um it's not just you know maybe you guys can relate to this it's not just make it prettier make make it sound good it's like you have to make audio assets for a brand that supports that brand's identity and 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 they communicate what the brand can, can wants to communicate you know it's not as easy as doing something you would like to hear or listen great great well to give some perspective here can you give some examples of i guess some famous audio brands or logos or any sounds that you have hiding up your sleeve oh yeah 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 of course of course jacob i'm going to do a little bit of acting right now and uh, say we are we bought a machine that promises that is going to make us the best professional we can so we get home and we start the machine and we hear this. So who can tell me what mm -hmm. brand am I talking about? All the fanboys out Definitely. there just... Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. No, I, uh, Apple. <laughs> okay, I, okay, okay. There, right? I was going to say something else just to see how you'd respond. <laughs> but I thought that, that would be like, that would be a real jerk to thing to do. So I'll, uh, okay, I'll so yeah, Apple, definitely Apple. That's brilliant. It's so recognizable, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. So picture this, 
I, hard day job. Uh, you reach home, you're going to see a movie and you hear this one. Netflix and chill. <laughs> Next week and chill, indeed. Or you can hear this one as well. If the white workers are going to get you. <laughs> Game of Thrones. There you go. So that's some very, uh, very strong little clips of sound that really are very identifiable. So this is what um, I hired Drop Music Branding to do for our show. Uh, we, we created an audio logo and we also created the intro and we also created, created a, um, a background loop that goes behind our audio and a sound cue that kind of is that we use between transitions and also an outro which is what we use at the end of the podcast um, when, we're, when things are closing out. So there's a lot of different sounds and we're going to dive into each of those. So would you, would you be able to um, share some of those that I just mentioned? Yes, of course, of course. For this project, um, we kind of leaned on, on my, my experience as a TV producer that I've been, I've, I've done this for many years. And so I understood that the podcast needed to have uh, some sections and some structure to the to the show, right? So of course, this is the intro. Just branding. Hello and welcome to Just Branding, the only podcast dedicated to helping designers and entrepreneurs grow brands. Here are your hosts, Jacob Cass and Matt Davies. Okay. That's class. Nice. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. R really happy with how it ended up. So the intro end ends with the audio logo because it's the audio logo it's like the mini hit of a brand it's a, it's the brand signature you need as a strategy i this i was thinking about uh, all the week <laughs> to say here in the show audio branding has a strategy that in, involves every asset of the brand every audio asset as well as graphic design has its kind of strategy and 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 every brand needs a strategy. We need to repeat our audio assets as many times as we it's possible because that's how our brain processes the, the main, I'm sorry, the main goal of audio branding is to link an emotion with the brand, you know, make it an experience. Make the brand experience. So our brain links uh, sound directly to emotions. This is because how we evolved as human beings. So if you're making an awesome product and you're making an awesome experience, you need to have an audio branding that reflects that. And so that every, the audience Whenever he listens to that sound, he says, "Okay, it's Netflix. Okay, it's HBO. I'm going. I'm starting my Mac. You know. So, the strategy is repetition. I think. I think this you're absolutely. Is, yeah. Sorry. Go on. No. No. Go on. No, no. You go, Gabo. This is Keep the going. audio logo of Just Branding. So you guys need to repeat that as many times <laughs> as you can. So audience will, whenever they hear this, they say, okay, it's Matt and Jacob, you know, this is brand strategy. This is just branding. And that's it. Yeah, but that's, that, that's, that's brilliant. I think, um, I think the other bit that I probably would add to the mix is from my perspective, because basically the way the project panned out was that Jacob engaged with you guys and Jacob, kind of, I let Jacob crack on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, I, 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 
That's okay. We'll come back to that one. No, no. So the way the project panned out was that um, because uh, Jacob basically engaged you and I didn't want to muddy the waters too much, but Jacob was keeping me updated all the way through. And we were sort of talking yeah. like, well, what kind of sound do we want? What kind of brand do we want to create for our, for our podcast? And, you know, the idea of being, um, having this idea of momentum and um, hopefully having a bit, be, being kind of cool, however you define that, you know, and being edgy and a little bit modern and also having something that was quite upbeat and, um, and reflected our personalities basically was, was kind of the brief that we were sort of dancing around ourselves. And then for that to go over to you, to be able to create that, we think, you know, obviously it, it's fantastic and it really represents where we wanted to go from a strategic perspective in sound. And as you say, connecting that to the human emotion behind it, that's a real skill. So I'd be really interested to, to hear, like, how did, you, um, how did you kind of think, well, this is the type of feel that these guys want. Um, and how did you translate that to sound? Because for me as a kind of an ex-designer and a strategist, that's a massive talent. And, uh, and you pretty much hit it, you know, off the bat with us. So have you got any thoughts on how you actually got those bits out of our brief and I were able to create some sounds which were really resonated with us. Okay, Matt, before I'm, I'm answering that, uh, I have to say you're making me blush. Thank you so much. And um, actually that was kind of a good brief, you know, it's like hip and kind of cool. And I saw how you guys look and talk and kind of the show is about strategy and we i asked you a, li a little bit about what make what would make this show unique and we kind of i i have two very talented partners as well i have to say that to dalmiro and, and mauro they are amazing artists and they are always listening to the last thing what is happening this month this day last week in the music industry so that's kind of a big thing to do always researching and we needed to do something that it was interesting that it was would catch people's attention and at the same time it had to have some kind of seriousness to the show because it's not like it's a show about brand strategy it's not like a comedy show right so that no. kind of makes everything although we different. do laugh from time to time i just say we do have a bit of a chuckle. yeah yeah I, i'm not i'm not saying that it's going to be like well that's <laughs> different if comedy. you're saying we're going to talk about uh global hunger i won't do something very <laughs> happy you know <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's kind of the uh, the approach we we had it was kind of free at some points because uh, we find ourselves having to educate a lot of of our, our clients in this case you were our client and and i had to do do a little bit of investigation about what would this podcast why would this podcast would, would be different and unique and i think it matches you know with both of you guys mm -hmm. i think it does yeah for sure and i think i was uh, another thing that helped along the process was um providing some examples of different references so you had something to go off and um that really yeah helped. definitely And then you came back to us with a few different options and we're like, oh, this one's great. Um, maybe just not that one. And then kind of just refined that. And then from that core sound, you created the rest of the sounds. I think that's a perfect cue into the other sound bites that created. So we've heard the intro, we've heard the audio logo, which I'd love you to play just once more. And then we'll go into, I guess, the sound cue, which is like a one second clip. And then uh, perhaps the loop and then the outro. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Gabba, I, Gabba, you have the, told the, us to play this as much as possible. So um, let's have it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, I'm just going to play it once more so people don't hate me, start hating me. But um, 
there Jacob uh, said something that it's very important because we kind of, without knowing how to do it, we developed a methodology for audio branding because audio branding is not, um, it's not new, but it's not, there's no more many books about it. So we kind of have to, I read everything and, and still have kind to have to understand how to do it and, and, and develop my own methodology. So what I understood was two things, two main things. I was always going to deal with designers who de develop their profession to branding. And I, I needed to start from a centerpiece to create the, the rest of the, the brand sound universe. So what we always do is start with the main thing that is the audio logo. Here's the just branding audio logo. Once we did that, we came up with the intro. Then we did the sound cue that is mainly for short transitions as an effect. that is like a, a shorter version of the audio logo. And then, oh, the branded loop. Yeah, the branded loop is an audio asset that it's used for giving rhythm to the dialogue. You know, when, when you're introducing someone or you're maybe talking about something that is a little bit looser than, than when they, the guest is saying something really important, you can play it on the background. So if, if you play it really low, it has the rhythm and you're still on brand, you know? That's kind of the main goal for this asset. This is my personal favorite. And the Very outro. Funky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like the intro, but with less uh, density of instruments and kind of, you know, gives, gives, the main goal is to give rhythm to the, to the speech. What you don't see here is uh, us head nodding along and uh, Gabriel is in his, <laughs> yeah, yeah, head banging. Can I, just, um, can, I, can I just come in here just um, one second, Gabo, and just ask you a quick question just before you go on to the outro? But you know, within that clip, there's um, a distorted voice that says just branding, which I absolutely yep. love, right? Um, and the other thing is, is that I know in our intro, we've got kind of a voice in, in, in intro as well. So I have a little question for you. Like, how do you, how, how sort of um, powerful do you think the human voice is in uh, sort of complementing these audio brands? Like, would you put that within this idea of audio branding? Like, would it be a great idea for brands, for example, to think about how they sound um, and to almost think about having a voiceover artist or a few voiceover artists that they could uh, could become their brand ambassadors or brand voices, if you if if you like. What do you think about those sort of ideas? Absolutely, Mike. It's absolutely necessary for every brand to have a voice. Definitely, I think that that's why. Although we are called drop music branding, that was like kind of a lucky accident. Um, we always say that we do audio branding because it's not just music branding. Music brand, music is a part of it, but having a brand voice is absolutely necessary for every brand because it gives the brand personality and humanity, you know? It, it makes the brand more relatable. So, yeah. No, I, I think that's fantastic. You see, um, one of the things I do a lot in my work, and I'm sure Jacob does in his, is 
you almost have to take um, clients and you have to kind of explain to them that really like consumers, they almost see brands like they see a person, right? So it dresses a certain way and it's in, the, in its graphic design and its visual language and its photography. Um, it speaks a certain way in its tone of voice and how it writes, but also becoming more increasingly, you know, particularly with Alexa and, uh, you know, voice and, and even ads on, on TV and so on. Obviously, it speaks a certain way, literally in the actual voice it has. So I, I certainly see this as a huge, um, a huge area of branding, which um, as strategists, we're going to have to get to grips with. But it's kind of alien from those of us that have kind of come from a design background. You know, because we're used to kind of plonking something on a page and being able to manipulate that. But this is so much more, um, so much different, to, so, so different to that. So uh, I, I'm really fascinated by, by that as, as, as kind of branding evolves into, into the future. How do you see it evolving into the future, Gabo? Have you got any thoughts on that? I'm sorry, I'm going to answer the, the, the one before. That... Of course, man, it's, it's like a person. A brand is like a person. It has its personality. And that's the second thing I, I realized back then that I can't fight with the topic that every, uh, every brand, when I, I'm sorry, when I talk to the, my direct client, they always say, okay, I, we need to develop more our graphic branding and then go to audio branding. And that's okay. I don't have to fight that, you know. So I'm always going to have people like you, Matt, saying I'm a graphic designer who developed strategy and I find, yes, of course, I have to get in line with you and understand that. And you have to understand that if a brand is a, clients have to see it like a personality as a person, you have to dress it. You have to think about your target audience. Well, you have to think how it sounds, how it speaks, what's its voice. You, you, we're always saying about the tone of the brand. How, how do we speak to our audience? Well, this is, we know what we are going to speak. This is how we're going to speak. Is it a female voice? Is it a male voice? No, Th those are, are big things to, to have in mind. And about where it's going. I think technology is going a lot to non-interface products uh, such, such as contactless uh, credit cards and, and as you said, Alexa and, and that kind of products and where sound is very important. I think that sound is very important for a user interface through interaction feedback. I think that's going to be big. And I think that eventually sound, if well done obviously and well designed sound audio branding, it improves. UX, I definitely think that. I agree. And so when you just touch on something there about um, we're, at the moment, we've actually gone through like a show such as ours, but there's so many other audio branding examples that we can use. One example that came to mind was Nintendo because they have like a very fun nature about them. So when you like interact with their games and like just send a message or anything, and it has that like fun feel to it. So when you're talking about tone of voice and like, like having a character that's the perfect example that came to my mind of uh, what you were just saying then so um on that topic i was going to ask like how can you distinguish uh, a good audio brand or good audio branding from bad audio branding because i know there's a lot of stock options out there it's probably like your most hated word but maybe you use that maybe you don't <laughs> like uh, i'm curious to your insights of like good bad and stock Hey, you, you, okay, thanks. That's a very interesting question. I think that uh, the example you made from, you gave from Nintendo is exactly perfect for this question because the audio branding has to represent the brand. 
support the brand and the values and what the brand wants to communicate. If Nintendo is a very uh, fun brand and, and, you know, Mario and all that, yee, woo! So every, <laughs> every little sound has to support that, you know? It's like... How did the guy go back? Good. Just do that again? That was brilliant. Yay, woo! <laughs> <laughs> You like to See, make I fun of me. You have a laugh on this. Show. You have a laugh on this. Show. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, Keep yeah. Going. So Sorry. suddenly I, I'm Mario. I would like to tell you at some point. <laughs> what I'm saying is, every bit, every audio touch point, every every audible touch point has to support the brand's personality. You have to be consistent. You know, you love that word. Uh, well. We too, we too need to have, we need to be consistent in every touch point. It builds trust. Well said, well said. Um, yeah, consistency does build trust. And I, I can see how much relation is, well, I guess Brandon is just like this big, um, this big thing, but it, it consistency and alignment between all of these things is what we're, we're going for here. So um, I think you summarize, summarize that quite well. Gabo, how can we communicate audio branding and its value to a client who may not know what audio branding is or how valuable it can be to their brand? Okay, I, I think that as I said before, um, I think that first, because of every client and what we uh, were built to know, Every client will want to have first its graphic logo and the color palette and, and all the graphic branding. But once they have that, that I think that today in today's world, every brand has it. They are going to want to start having videos and communicating through social media. And there's a big audible touch point there and you have to make the client understand that you can't leave it a chance you know you can't take any music because it's kind of hard because every everybody has an opinion on on music you know we all love music and we all listen to music and everybody thinks that they had a, a the greatest taste and you know i like keep music so i know what this is going to do so i think that the most valuable thing you can say about audio branding is that it it connects with the audience at a at an emotional level and that's very important to to create an, a brand experience so i think that's the the way that's the path you know sure so you, you said touch points what are some touch points that the most let's say a small business uh, or even a, a startup could use what are the main touch points okay i think that social media is is the main touch point to nowadays because everybody is using them it's kind of the way you communicate to the to the world as a brand and it could also be advertising. Uh, there, you need to use audio as well. And well, today, nowadays, podcasting is going to be big. So there's a big touch point there. For big brands, or, or it, dep it depends on, on the brand mainly, but for big brands, IVR is an audible touch point as well. Events, well, uh, events are, are are a big touch point as well because you can there you can we've been doing pro big projects of for big brands that they ask us to do a brand song you know where they if they have a stand or some big event you know when where brands go and i i can i can say the word in english um conventions big All conventions right. where you have to stand out from your competition well then you have your brand song in loop 
and your audio logo everywhere and you you got to try to to connect with the audience uh, with every possible tool and that's amazing audio so is a like big a one. conference or a big event or something you would have you know your audio your your audio branding and i suppose if you if you had any members of your organization who were going to get up to speak or something you might then play the audio branding to kind of introduce them and stuff like that so then it kind of really grows doesn't it i guess as a as a as a concept as a marker yes uh, yeah 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 totally totally you you have to try to create that sound universe throughout every little chance you have to you know salesmen have to have the 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 ringtone of the brand so if they're in a sale <laughs> they oh okay you know maybe i'm gonna do some yeah, that's example for, for <laughs> i'm gonna change my example. ringtone to the just branding logo yeah me too let me just yeah. uh let's pause the, let's just pause everything there oh like oh ah. so sorry my my phone is ringing <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, but you what need, brand you is it that you... on there. <laughs> <laughs> well you know it's relatable yeah and recognizable well i think that earlier before we started recording you said something that was very relatable here good audio branding is invisible so what do you mean by that yeah I mean, well, you you ask me how can you differentiate from a good audio brand from a bad audio branding? Uh, the interdisciplinary design, it's invisible because it's it's done for an it's a means to an end. You know, it you have to solve things through design and well design, well done design. It's invisible because people doesn't even notice that there's a strategy, there's a plan. Somebody studied how the interface would be better for the user. So I think good audio branding reflects the personality of a brand in such a way that anybody doesn't, they don't notice it, you know, for example, when Apple uh, introduced the iPhone 10, I think, uh, they they played the video of every product and all the history of Apple products. And in the video, they, were, they would play the, some characteristic sound of their products. So when you shut your macbook you know it's that sound it's amazing you know it's not just sound for video it's it's some it, uh, snacks you know french fries how many french fries make their their brand like crunch you know it's like they're based on their audio branding and you don't even realize so that's good audio branding yeah, this, yeah it's very powerful. Like when you open a Coke, when you open a Coke, there's like that that sound. When you shut a BMW door, there's of a course. certain sound. It's, uh, it's and all there, there, there are it? people that, yeah, and and there is a big team of people studying how the sound would be better if they they do a click or they're, at, at, you know, it's it's amazing. Yeah. It's a sound design. Yeah, so Coca-Cola sells happiness. They're not sugar in a bottle. Well, that's what they're trying to tell us anyway. But that that opening sound that's is the what they're trying to relate to happiness. So open happiness, it ties in with their whole brand. Um, and the, yeah, tradition. and the, oh, for final, oh, you know, it's like, oh, now I'm happy. It's it's amazing. You know, they they pull it. Yeah, they do it well. So there's one more question uh, on. <laughs> That's totally unrelated to this, but uh, trademarking, it's a very important aspect of audio branding. And I guess it's the next step it's after a very all important, of this. Yeah. So the next step after yes, it's a very a important brand. thing because, yes, it's a big thing. You, you have to, when you decide to, to involve in audio branding, you have to know 
some certain aspects. I would think, I think that a brand needs to buy the, the copyrights of the, of the audio branding because it, it wouldn't, it, it would be useless if they had to pay every, every time they use it, you know. It's kind of the, the main thing about having your own original audio branding, you know. It's your sound. It's like copywriting of a logo, you know. You, you, you have to assure your brand that it's the only brand that is going to use that. So, it's so for big, yeah. And it's us. The when you're saying that, are you talking about you when you buy audio brand, you ensure that you own the rights to it and not paying royalties on it? Is that what you're referring to? It's not that you are not paying royalties. You actually are paying royalties, but you're paying it to yourself because you own the 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 copyright. You know the. I think that. For example, and we're talking about big brands, you know, when, whenever we, whenever we work with small brands or entrepreneurs, that's not an issue because the, the copyrights that it generates, they are not big. So we, I got you. We give it to them, you know, it's, it's not, it's not that important, but when you have to make a national advertise, you know, advertisement I'm sorry and you there's a lot of money involved and there's an, a very big industry in music and that fits around that so you need to buy your copyrights so that you pay the royalty in the royalties but you pay it to yourself you know because there, there there's a system and there's a certain uh, organizations that uh, keep track of what's being used in TV and where there's a big there's a big issue about YouTube and, and internet about that because you know uh, open source and and royalties are not kind of friends <laughs> yes. but they're get, <laughs> they're getting it. So um, I think that it's important for big brands to to buy the the royalties, and if you're in, if you're an entrepreneur or a small brand, I would talk about it and and wouldn't wouldn't think that if you have your original audio branding, don't think you will have any problem about it. Okay, so uh, I was going to ask before. I think we're, we should start to summarize. I, I wanted to give a big shout out to you, say, say thank you for all of your hard work uh, with Branding, Just Branding. And it was just incredible, really. And I just wanted to give this opportunity to you to talk about the benefits of Audio Brand. So if you were trying to sell this through to someone, how would you sell the benefits of Audio Branding? And obviously, who, and, well, who should they go to for it? So. Okay, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks to you, Jacob. Really, it's been I I feel like a little bit of like a the Cinderella story about this because I I since the twenty twenty started I I started talking to people and putting myself out there and and taking my chances and and getting out of the comfort zone of you know being doing business here in Argentina. And it's been really quite a journey and it's, it's amazing, you know, I, I've, I've been having this amazing feedback and interactions and getting to know people like you yourself. And that's awesome. I, I, it's, it's the best thing globalization had done for me, you know, getting to know people that I, I can relate to and, and good persons, you know, thanks. Thanks to you, man. And okay benefits awareness it's a pretty big benefit of audio branding you know it's people start to to understand and recognize your sound so that's a big one differentiation you know you're making yourself unique and and differentiating of from the the 
competition, memorability, you know, you people start being reminding your sounds and the way your brand sounds and kind of you're starting to build your personality and again being unique this builds trust definitely and and builds trust and you start to to you start to generate uh, like a, a ecosystem you know that people start to feel belonging to it you, you people start to the audience start to become fan of the brand and that's a main benefit of audio branding because as i said before how our brain processes sound it links it to emotions so, and when you start being consistent with your sounds and and that reflect your your brand's personality and you you start to be generating a, a fan club you know and it's it becomes a, an experience and as i said before it improves ux and well i think that's there are a lot of benefits <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of benefits and you you summarize them well and we're, we've seen the, the benefits ourselves so Thank you for that summary. I'm not sure if you had anything else to add, Matt. No, I just wanted to thank Gabo for coming on as well, the, the show. I mean, it's one thing to do a great job with our branding, but then to give up his time to come on and to, to, to talk to the listeners about it is another thing altogether. So thanks for coming on. I absolutely love your humility um, with all of this stuff, but I, th I think you're fantastic. And uh, I would definitely say if anyone's out there thinking, you know, well, uh, we, we could do with some of that. Reach out to Gabo. I'm sure he'd be more than happy to kind of give you some tips and some pointers and, and, and maybe work with you. So, you know, thank you so much for your professionalism and for coming on and for your energy. It's been great. Thank you. Well, thanks, Matt. I, I love you too, guys. And thanks for having me. And well, if you want to reach out to me, it's dropmusicbranding.com. And here we are. Cool. Thank you. And I just want to touch on what you said earlier about putting yourself out there. And you, I actually came across you on, on LinkedIn because you left a comment on one of my posts and I just checked out your profile and that's really how the relationship started. So by putting yourself out there, you got found and here we are. So you never know where things will take you. So I'll leave on that note. Thank you again and uh, we'll see you next episode.